back when I was still playing video games, when you bought a game, that was it. You had the whole game with all the content unlocked without the need for further purchases. And if the game had any cosmetics, they had to be earned through rigorous grinding. But the current era of gaming is completely different. Now look at this. We've got loot boxes, battle passes, DLCs, premium currencies, and wow. much more. This means that even if the game is free, it can cost you hundreds of dollars over your playtime. And don't kill me for saying this, but I don't think most of the in-game monetizations are necessarily evil. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Gaming is a business after all and businesses need to make money to keep the doors open. They also have employees to feed. In the 2000s, the average cost of producing a AAA game title was about one to $4 million, while today it can cost up Bruh. to $200 million. So these costs need to be paid somehow. Otherwise, the companies creating these games go bust along with their employees. However, problems arise with how the games are monetized. It seems that every third AAA title that's released today is just a lazy cash grab. And the most common way to grab that cash is battle passes. While some gamers don't see anything wrong with them, battle passes are actually one of the smartest ways to monetize games, as they utilize a series of cognitive biases that make them irresistible to most players. So irresistible that they made Fortnite billions and have changed the entire landscape of gaming to this day. It all started in 2013 with Dota 2. Leading up to the biggest tournament of the year, Valve introduced the Compentium, which was the first ever battle pass. It provided the players with cosmetics as they played the game and predicted the tournament results. 20% of the cost went to the tournament's prize pool. It was a great proof of concept and went on to raise millions of dollars for future tournaments. But where the battle pass concept really took off was of course with Fortnite. As the game was free to play, they used battle passes as their monetization tactic. It was great for the players as they could enjoy the game for free and choose to pay $10 to unlock the battle pass. The battle pass would come with 100 tiers, with each tier unlocking different rewards, ranging from character skins to taunts and in-game premium currency. Each tier would be unlocked by simply playing the game. If you unlocked all tiers and finished the battle pass, you would gain enough premium currency to buy the next one. And each battle pass would last about 12 weeks. It was a season and it worked wonders. And in just the first two years of its launch, Fortnite was able to generate $9 billion in revenue. The genius about the strategy was that the battle pass gave you a specific time limit to focus your play. And it also then gave you a reason to continue to play the game month after month, season after season. So it kept you in the game. Whereas once you finished the game, you might have moved on to a different one. So it was actually a great way to retain gamers in the same title. And its success didn't go unnoticed. As from there, every game started introducing its own version of battle passes. And that's why today we see so many free to play games. They make the game available to everyone, hook players in and monetize through battle passes and in-game stores. Now, the good thing behind battle passes is that it got rid of the loot box mechanic in a lot of games, which we could argue are a much more predatory monetization mechanic. I mean, it literally introduces gambling to video games. So instead of locking cosmetics behind surprise mechanics. We don't call them loot boxes. I think that was- Whatever the, term but, but, you wish to apply yeah, to them, so, do so, you consider them ethical? So what we look at it as, as surprise mechanics. You can now see exactly what you get when you pay for a battle pass. And most battle passes are structured in a linear way where there are a few rewards for the free to play players and the better rewards are hidden behind the premium battle pass towards the higher tiers. Now, the second benefit of battle passes was that it saved some games from the pay to win mechanic. In most games, the battle pass rewards are simply cosmetic, meaning you don't actually get any advantage over other players through paying. And lastly, you are not forced to pay for the battle pass, meaning that you can just enjoy the game for free if that's what you want. If the battle passes weren't present in the game, the game wouldn't be free in the first place, or it might monetize itself through much more predatory mechanics. Now, as I mentioned earlier, battle passes are high highly profitable. But why is that? Well, there are actually four cognitive biases the battle passes utilize for the developer's advantage. They are social proof, FOMO, loss aversion, and the IKEA effect. Social proof. Humans are highly social creatures. Most decisions we make in our daily lives, like it or not, are influenced by other people. For example, if everyone you know drives a BMW and praises how great of a car brand it is, you will likely form the same opinion without doing any further research. And 
It makes sense. We live busy lives and don't have the time to analyze every single opinion that we form. So if you're playing Fortnite and see everyone running around with different skins from the Battle Pass, then you will automatically assume that it's a great purchase. Everyone else is buying it. It must be great value after all. You might even feel left out as you'll be one of the few players with the default skin. I mean, some players actually get bullied for using the default skins. We've seen that in a lot of schools. Now, most battle passes only last for a limited time, meaning the skins that come with the battle pass will be gone forever once it's over. Usually that period lasts about three months. This creates artificial scarcity. You don't want to miss out on that banana skin once the season is over. That ties directly into loss aversion. If you spent 20 hours grinding out the battle pass, but still haven't gotten to the last tier with the skin you wanted, you will do whatever it takes to get to that last tier. Some games like Modern Warfare 2 know this and utilize it to make you spend even more. In Modern Warfare, the battle pass is structured like a map, where each tier is represented by a tile that has separated rewards in it once unlocked. However, it takes ages to grind out the experiences to unlock these tiles and rewards. That's why you can actually pay the premium currency to unlock them. So the players that are tight on time and fear that they won't unlock the final reward before the season is over will just buy more premium currency to unlock it. They are essentially paying for the battle pass and then paying again to unlock tiers within that battle pass. For the profits of the gaming company, it's brilliant. Lastly, the IKEA effect. The IKEA effect is a cognitive bias in which consumers place a disproportionate high value on products they partially create. A 2011 study found that subjects were willing to pay 63% more for furniture they had assembled themselves than for equivalent pre-assembled items. So how does this tie into battle passes? Well, once again, if you've already spent many days grinding to unlock tiers in the battle pass, you will want to keep logging into that game. You will value that game over others, even if you don't enjoy it as much. While Fortnite arguably has some of the most player-friendly battle passes, not all games do. Games like Apex Legends and Modern Warfare 2 are notorious for having battle passes full of filler content. They will reward you with terrible skins, XP boosters, and pointless banners just to keep the dopamine going, while all the good skins are locked behind the last tiers, which forces you to spend crazy hours grinding the game or buy premium currency to get that last tier faster. Now, these battle passes are designed to monopolize your time and keep your attention away from other games for as long as possible. How many times have you played another match instead of sleeping so you can finish the tier? Modern Warfare 2 also keeps the well-designed skins out of the battle pass. Why give them to you with a $10 subscription when they can charge you a separate $30 instead? Some also argue that Infinity Ward is purposely making battle pass skins bad for the contrast effect. So when the player is presented with the basic battle pass skins, they will perceive the expensive ones in the shop as much more valuable than they actually are. Infinity Ward would push on this even further Further by releasing guns in the shop that have better stats than the default guns. And after a few months of them being out, they often nerf the guns, making them not so useful anymore. Meaning you need to go back to the shop once again to find your next gun. I like to refer to that as the accountant focused game design, where the game is optimized for maximum profits rather than player enjoyment. So those are a few of the cognitive biases that Ballot Passes prey on. And there are a few suggestions I have to keep yourself safe from the issues surrounding them. First, avoid free-to-play games as they usually have predatory monetization mechanics. They need to make money somehow and they'll make it off of you. For more on this, check out my interview with an ex-gamer called Abby who found herself spending way too much money on a mobile free-to-play game. Next, if your favorite game has a battle pass, try playing the game without it. Yes, you may not have all the rewards or the skins or other things that come with it, but that's okay. Embrace having less in the game and keeping it safer for you rather than having it turn into a problem. It's actually about trying to get less out of the experience than trying to maximize every single moment. You can also change the game you play. For instance, single player games that don't have these predatory mechanics. For me personally, I like chess because it doesn't have microtransactions. Finally, you can choose to spend the money IRL instead. For example, treat yourself to a gym membership for three months as a sort of battle pass instead of a virtual one that gets you nowhere. Or you can sign up to a group class, such as a four week improv class or salsa dancing class as a way to have a structured time frame to focus on learning a new skill. Now, maybe you're just fed up with gaming and you are ready to move on. Well, in that case, then you should do it the easy way by watching this video.